the final match of the European Cup. It's going to be Italy versus Sweden. They're neck and neck, three to three. Whoever wins this next game is going to be crowned the champion. They are indeed, and uh, they will be a very worthy champion, whichever team goes through on to win this tournament. Italy, the dominant favourites and doing so well across their group stage and coming here to the final of the tournament. And of course, the worthy underdog, absolutely Sweden, um, coming in and taking this tournament by storm. And it's so exciting watching them go from uh, losing... 8-0 uh, and o in the uh, group stages versus mm -hmm. Italy to now being neck and neck, free and free. This is the last game between these two countries. And we've got an absolute cracker for you. Uh, we have Arash Amati versus David Barker. Yeah, let's take a closer look at Arash and some of his accolades. Now, he's a player who really needs no introduction. Uh, you know, he's the world champion from 2013. He really has been able to take his competitive Pokemon all the way. But then he also... Um, was German national champion in 2016 and top eight world championships in 2018. So a player from Italy, really well known. You know, he does so well, so consistent. And he's going to be someone who's going to bring all of this experience. You know, you're looking at a solid, almost a decade of Pokemon play here. And mm. he's going to be able to take this into the final match. It's, it's, it's one of these situations we couldn't ask for anything better, really, in the finals to have it come literally down to the wire. You know, with it being a best of kind of set, sometimes you maybe win it in the first three or four games, but it's literally come down to this last one. So there is going to be a lot of pressure on Arash's soldiers right now. There is, and uh, even more pressure on David uh, being on the Swedish side, a top flinch, uh, top flinch squad member, uh, one of the online communities um, hosted by uh, one of our co-commentators, um, very good guy, Lee Provost. But uh, starting in 2016, um, I've seen him at quite a few events. I know, Lou, you've played against him as well, um, and a, a real uh, sort of cornerstone of the Swedish community as well. Um, so, you know, he's going to be bringing everything that he has and the, the full experience and weight of the Swedish mm. team will be behind him, I'm sure, uh, as well as all of his uh, friends that will be supporting him as well. So, uh, David, taking it for Sweden and uh, without further ado, let's go into the match. Here we are, team preview, uh, David versus Arash. Well, Arash is bringing a fairly standard team. We've got Dragapult, Togekiss, Tyranitar, Amoongus, Excadrill, and Incineroar. So a classic sand team there with some good redirection. But David is bringing Venusaur, Ndidi, Torkoal, Hatterene, Urshifu, and Cinderace. I'm loving the weather going on from both these teams. There's definitely going to be some weather wars going on here. And Excadrill uh, naturally doing quite well versus uh, Torkoal and Venusaur uh, with its both typing and offensive pressure. But of course... Venusaur has that access to that G-Max Vine Lash. And if, uh, if David is able to maneuver himself into a good position to have that Venusaur on the field, it's going to be doing lots of damage to uh, really everything on, uh, on Arash's team, as well as doing all of that residual damage. So something Arash is going to have to watch out for, certainly. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's that cinderace Urshifu combination that we seem to be seeing sort of crop up uh, more and more commonly uh, across these teams coming out from... Uh, David and Cinderace with its uh, fighting type moves uh, that it has mm. access to will be definitely doing a lot of work versus Excadrill and Tyranitar. But, uh, you know, lots of mixes going on here. Um, I think these are just two solid teams um, <laughs> that are going to be matching up against each other. Uh, and of course, looking at this, just a, a last little note before we get into turn one. If speed doesn't work out for David, he always has that trick room mode with mm -hmm. available to him. Yeah, indeed, he had a really classic Trick Room combination. Um, doesn't seem to have too many other Pokemon suited for Trick Room on his team necessarily. You know, there's the Tall Cold, fair enough, but it seems to be paired up with that Venusaur. But I think you're right, Ben. It does give him that good flexibility to have, which I think would be really key. Um, he's leading out with the Ndidi and Venusaur. Gives him so much utility for bringing in Sun to change up speed dramatically or just have some protective redirection with Follow Me. Whereas Arash has gone for Excadrill and Togekiss. Flexibility is definitely the name of the game there. Uh, Lou, it's it's going to be, you know, what, does the does the Indeedy switch out? Does the Indeedy go for a follow me? Uh, does it need to go for a helping hand? You know, there's mm. there's lots of different options there uh, available for David. But of course, you know, there's follow me support with the Togekiss. There's the Excadrill there. Um, both Pokemon can go for their Dynamax form uh, if 
Arash wants to speed up his team, he can go for that Togekiss to go into its Dynamax and get those max airstreams. But of course, Excadrill, great for setting up the defenses and uh, both of these players in a position where they have their Weber abusers on the field and can switch in their uh, respective Weber setters uh, to get the uh, position that they want. Uh, Do David is on the better end on that. Togekiss is faster than Indeedy. So if both of these players decided to switch out, which they haven't as we're seeing a Dynamax going, <laughs> um, but it would have been uh, David on the better end of that. Well, David going straight for the Gigantamax Venusaur here on the field. I'm sure Gmax Vinelash will be coming out just to deal out some really strong damage to something like that Excadrill. But again, you have to worry about this Togekiss. It can redirect as well. And Didi going first for that move. Follow me in, gonna redraw in any attacks going that way, maybe trying to remove any air slashes potentially from the Togekiss. Good synergy coming out though with the extra drill going for that Earthquake. Does decent damage to both Venusaur and Ndidi while not hurting the partner Pokemon of Togekiss. Togekiss, however, is going to have to take one of those max oozes. Not enough to pick up a KO. You know, the Poison type max move is capped at 90 base power. It's not as strong, but what it does manage to do is boost the special attacks on the next turn. Venusaur being able to survive this turn due to Ndidi not only redirecting, but the move missing. Venusaur is going to be able to deal like, even more damage in the next turn. It certainly is. And, uh, you know, that. That uh, air slash not landing into the Indeedy is quite telling for this turn. And uh, the Indeedy wants to be able to take as many hits as possible. Well, uh, it's going to be able to take one more now with that Togekiss not being able to uh, bring the Indeedy into KO range for that Excadrill, uh, which does mean that, um, you know, there's a little bit more scope for uh, David in this turn. Of course, we still have the uh, opportunity for both of these players to bring in their weather setters, but I wouldn't be surprised to see David just. Uh, carry on going for that follow me uh, getting some more damage on Venus uh, with Venusaur onto mm. Arash's side of the field but uh, really crucially now uh, Arash hasn't chosen to go for his Dynamax now he's going to be saving that for later in the game and something David's going to have to be careful of yeah a nice switch here as well keeping your Togekiss preserved for later on maybe to get some critical hits if you are running a crit kiss variant um, or as well just to redirect away another day and Sonora bringing in the Intimidate there's going to be kind of null and void but um, I think being able to fire off some maybe fire type moves will be quite critical here. Of course, you can't use fake out with that psychic terrain in play either. Arash mm. going to Dynamax going for that Excadrill. This is actually a great position for him to start going for something like some Max Quake, start boosting up the special defense on your side of the field against mm. these two mm. special attackers. And that will help out the Incineroar as well that has just rejoined. Indeedy going for that follow me once again, just doing what it's known for. And it really does help out the Venusaur here. When you're in your Dynamax, you don't want to be taking any unnecessary damage you want to stay as healthy as you can to use all of those max moves so indeedy going to take this max quake and will fall victim to it but again i like this play by rash being able to boost up the special defense on his side of the field because being faster than that venusaur means you get the boost before venusaur has a chance to attack and it kind of levels the playing field considering venusaur did get special attack boost previously it does however go through his exclusive at fine lash gmax move into that x and you can really see the benefit from taking that special defense boost as well does do about 50% and critically will be now bringing the vines lashing around on the field for the next couple of turns. That is some ferocious beating going on. Look, you can see all of the damage that both Excadrill and Incineroar have been taking. I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, we think about targeting here, whether the uh, Max Quake was targeted into the Ndidi by Arash, uh, just covering the Torkoal uh, coming in beforehand. Uh, of course, the Excadrill getting off its Max Quake first does mean that the uh, special defense and special attack have been leveled out uh, between Excadrill and Venusaur. Uh, Ashifu, though, coming in here, uh, going to be that single strike, if I saw that correctly, um, and going to be putting a lot of pressure on Incineroar. Psychic Terrain, as you mentioned, Lou, is still in effect, and no fake outs are going to be able to come out. So uh, that Urshifu really going to be threatening a KO on the Incineroar. Uh, and, you know, Urshifu not likely to be knocked out. Or not, nor is this Venusaur by mm. any move that the Excadrill has in its arsenal, uh, depending on whether the Urshifu is carrying a Focus Sash or not, uh, one of the most common items that it's known to carry. Um, so, you know, a really nice position here for David. He's going to be able to be on the front foot, uh, whether it's with that close combat coming out from Urshifu or maybe even a Max Quake coming into uh, the Incineroar. Mm. But actually going to be defensive plays from both players here. Urshifu going to detect and the Exodrill going to use Max Guard as well. Venusaur going to go for that Max Quake. They're targeting down into that Incineroar. Does manage to pick up a solid KO against it. I like this targeting on this particular occasion. Your Urshifu can deal with the Exodrill really well. But Incineroar, you don't want to leave on the field. We've seen it time and time again where it can switch out, come back in, intimidate, fake out. And if 
Arash is in a position where he's able to preserve it and stall out that psychic terrain. Be able to start applying a lot more pressure with Intimidates to the physical attacker Urshifu there that you can see on the field already. That's going to really sort of give um, David a lot, of, a lot of hassle later down the line. So I think removing it was really critical for him. It certainly was. And one of the ways that you win a weather war in, if you're uh, playing that sort of game is to stop your opponent being able to switch, uh, change around their, their board states and uh, make sure that your weather is the only weather on the field. Uh, we've still got two more turns of this ferocious beating and the uh, to uh, Togekiss in the back will only be able to last one more turn uh, against that kind of extra damage output. And of course, uh, Tyranitar, with its, if, if that comes in for a rush now, uh, will be heavily under threat from a potential switch out from the Venusaur um, and some more big grass type moves. Of course, Venusaur going back into its normal form now. Uh, Togekiss coming back onto the field. We've still, of course, got one more turn of the Excadrill going for its Dynamax moves. And, uh, you know, Urshifu um, will want to be, uh, you know, on David's side mm. of the field, maybe taking out that Togekiss now, uh, just paving the way for. Urshifu to be one of the only Pokemon left when the uh, likelihood is that Tyranitar enters the field and, um, you know, if, if, if there was a one-on-one -on -one that David would want, I think it's Urshifu versus Tyranitar. Well, exactly. I mean, we can see that Arash is planning to switch that Tyranitar in, but even just knowing that it's in the back there, if you're Arash, you have to get rid of this Urshifu. It's in such a prime position to pick up KOs against Tyranitar as soon as it hits the field and also still apply pressure to that extra drill. Togekiss, however, is the answer to that Urshifu, so it's interesting it's come out of the the field at the moment, Arash may be needing to preserve it, so he's in an opportune moment to be able to pick up KOs against that Urshifu where needed. And of course, the sand's going to help out the speed of this Excadrill. Going for that Max Steel Spike, targeting down the Venusaur will be enough, I believe, there. The pixels might be misleading me to pick up the KO, <laughs> um, as the extra will be able to get that defense boost and also sell with the Tyranitar, which I think is critical. Um, I'm not sure if one defense boost is enough with a four times weakness, if you know, something like close combat's going to go into. Um, the Tyranitar, but you know, every little helps in this situation. Extra's done its work, gave Tyranitar a defense boost that has been KO'd. And I actually like this position now from Arash because he can bring in that Togekiss and redirect, protect that Tyranitar. He certainly can, but there is, I believe, one more turn left of the Gigantamax. Uh, so the, the Ferocious the Beetle coming up from that G-Max Vine Lash. Uh, that's the case, if I've counted correctly, uh, which I think I have, but you know, they <laughs> always. Uh, Always a chance that I've counted wrong. Um, counting is very hard indeed. Um, then that Togekiss will be going down at the end of this turn. Of course, uh, the sand now cancelled out by that Torkoal coming in for the drought. So it uh, will depend on what type of Torkoal this is as to whether it will be able to uh, launch any good attacks into the Tyranitar. And of course, mm. uh, whether or not the Urshifu decides to go straight on the offensive and knock out that Togekiss where uh, that Tyranitar is going to be taking its only potential turn of advantage mm -hmm. from the follow me support coming from the Togekiss. Uh, if Tyranitar is able to knock out the Urshifu this turn, then it is one-on-one -on -one versus the Torkoal, but the only move that it would be able to use is superpower, and superpower would reduce the Tyranitar's attack. If that's the case, uh, then it's going to have a really tough time trying to deal with the Torkoal in the endgame. Interestingly, no. Follow me coming after the Togekiss Arash trying to play this offensively, but Togekiss will fall victim to the Wicker Blow with that critical hit guarantee from the Urshifu. Tyranitar going for the Rock Slide will be able to connect on both the opposing Pokemon, but I wonder if David is running that body press to a coal because that can apply so much pressure to Tyranitar with its four times fighting weakness, but hey, you can't go for body press if you flinch. So that does put Arash <laughs> in a nice position, except for the fact there's still Urshifu on the field. There still is, and uh, yeah, that close combat is... Uh, becoming ever closer uh, to hitting that Tyranitar. And of course, with that Unseen Fist ability coming out from Urshifu single strike, uh, yeah, the, the Tyranitar is not going to be able to do anything about that. It's not going to be able to protect. It's not going to be able to uh, attack first. And so it uh, looks like this game goes to David. Um, and I think Arash is, looks like he's just taking the time here uh, just to think about how he's going to be mixing it up going into the next game, how he's going to adjust and play his game too. Exactly. You're in this precarious situation now where game one looks like it's wrapped up pretty well here for David. And of course, this is the final game. Urshifu comes out for that close combat and takes Sweden one game away from taking the championship. So if you're a rash right now, you really have to take every opportune second to start planning your plan of attack for game two because... 
The Tyranitar and the Exodil, really, really like that combo. I like the way he played it late as well, bringing in the Tyranitar to boost up the speed for the Exodil, but he maybe needs to go a little bit more on the offensive straight away because Urshifu is a massive problem for him. You can see how much damage it can deal to so many of his Pokemon um, options, you know, um, just applying so much damage even to like something like the Dragapult, you can still target that mm. with a Wicked Blow and it really does kind of limit his options a little bit. So he needs to be able to bring that Togekiss into a position to pick up a solid KO against Urshifu and then maybe have that Sandcore there ready to start doing what it does best, being speedy and picking up damage. Definitely, and I think Togekiss is really the key for this matchup for Arash. Uh, you know, we saw it take so much damage from a uh, Max Ooze in the previous game. Um, you know, great stuff going on from David there to make sure he was pressuring the Togekiss. And Togekiss, uh, while it takes a lot of damage, can also dish out quite a lot of damage against the um, Indeedy on mm -hmm. David's side of the field, uh, as well as the Venusaur, of course. Um, so I think, you know, there's, there's a, a real uh, question mark here for me is, uh, whether or not the Indeedy can go down without the Togekiss taking any damage. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then, you know, Togekiss can really go on the offensive here. As you were saying, Lou, uh, I think it really is the Dynamax target of choice uh, in this matchup. And uh, maybe maybe a little, a little bit earlier, you, you bring the Tyranitar out into the fray and, uh, you know, decide to maybe try to use this considerable, uh, considerable defensive bulk against your opponent. Uh, knock out that Indeedy really early, uh, stop any support, redirection support from the Venusaur and just go for, um, you know, that max airstream into mm -hmm. the Venusaur, get some speed boosts on the field, uh, try and get faster than that Urshifu. I think that's quite important for this matchup. Um, and then uh, try to uh, sort of push through David's team in that way. Yeah, well, Arash really taking his time to sort of go into the game too here, maybe just take a few seconds to compose himself. But he seems to know what his plan is already. You know, in this team preview, he's locked in the first three very quickly. Exegrill, Togekiss, um, not really too it's unsurprising there. You know, you can go for um, the earthquakes that we saw. But I think you're right, Ben. The Togekiss is going to be the key, and he needs to be able to preserve this well. If David does go for something like that Venusaur again, something like the Maxu is going to do too much damage that Togekiss is not going to have the longevity to make it through the game. No, it's not. And you know the speed, the speed uh, sort of conversation doesn't really apply too much all the time, right? There's there's the the times where you have Venusaur in Sun, and the times where Urshifu is on the field. Those are the only two times um, that the speed really goes against the rash. Mm. And if if it's the case that you know neither of those things are happening at the time, then actually a rash has the speed advantage. So you know a max airstream would be setting up quite well for. Um, you know, seeing that position come into uh, or stop being a problem, let's say. Well, don't see many changes going on here, Ben, as we jump into game two. Extra Togekiss for Arash, and David has gone once again for that in DD Venusaur. And I really fully agree with David not really wanting to shake things up here. He can apply so much pressure with the Venusaur, and you still have that constant threat of the tool core maybe switching in and making the Venusaur super, super speedy. Um, but I think if he wants to go for that Dynamax again with the Venusaur, I think it would be a great idea because you can apply so much residual damage uh, with the ferocious mm. beating of the Vine Lash afterwards. You definitely can. And, and you know, I think, you know, the, the Pokemon look the same, but I think the moves will look quite different in this turn. I can't can't imagine that uh, Arash is going to be going for exactly the same thing uh, this time as he did before. Uh, but just as you said, Lou, there is that Gigantamax Venusaur coming onto the field. Uh, it's got his hat on, let's say, uh, <laughs> ready for the sun. Um, let's see if it goes for another Max who's the same as the last time. Well, it's going to be another Dynamax straight away coming out here um, from Arash's side. You know, last time he didn't go on the offensive as quickly, he went for that Earthquake, but I don't disagree with this play at all because... Oh, it's actually going to be the Togekiss, of course. Really don't disagree with this, Ben. This is what we wanted to see. <laughs> um, I thought it was the extra there for a minute. I got my, my Pokeballs all muddled up. But I really like this position because although Togekiss may still fall victim to something like the Max Suits, it can deal out so much damage with the Max Airstream in retaliation. Indeed, not going for any redirection this time, but instead we'll go for that Helping Hand. Um, it's going to be the Earthquake coming out straight away from that to uh, from the Excadrill. Once again, obviously not dealing anything to Togekiss. And Max Ooze coming out from the Venusaur. It still does a horrible amount of damage thanks to the Helping Hand boost into that Togekiss. I mean, if the um, Dynamax hadn't been happening there, that would have picked up such a strong KO. Venusaur taking a little bit of recoil as Togekiss is going to fire off a Max Airstream in retaliation into the Venusaur. Not enough to pick up a KO, but crucially, we'll be boosting the speed up on Arash's side of the field. 
Yeah, as you can see, both players learning from game one there. Uh, you've got the helping hand coming out from Indeedy to make sure the Toga Kiss actually does get knocked out this time and doesn't uh, survive on a, a small sliver of HP as it did in game one. Uh, and of course, you have the Max Airstream coming out. Uh, Max Airstream doesn't miss like Air Slash does. Mm. Uh, so that's that's one thing. Uh, we've got some speed boosting going on as well. And that Venusaur uh, doesn't look like it's in a nice position. Uh, the question is, is whether or not the uh, Torkoal will be coming in now for that uh, Indeedy, just to make sure that Venusaur does get that last attack off. Um, it's got a boosted special attack now. So, you know, a GMAX Vine Lash will do a lot of work. Well, the Dynamax Pokemon here taking a little bit of a rest, both going for their Max Guard. Um, Excadrill once again going for that Earthquake, not going to do any damage except to that Indeedy. Um, Indeedy hasn't gone for a Protect or Follow Me or a Helping Hand in the situation, so Expanding Force looks to be the move of choice here, not going to do anything to that Togekiss thanks to the Max Guard. But in the terrain with a little boost is over 50% Ooh. to Excadrill with a critical hit, so that's some really good damage coming out from the Indeedy. Normally a supportive Pokemon, but proving in terrain with the new move Expanding Force, it can still be an offensive threat. Certainly can be, and uh, yeah, this is this is now really tight. You've got every Pokemon on the field. Looks like it could be knocked out in the next turn, so uh, really uh, quite a sharp position to be in. Uh, I still do think that there's that uh, Torkoal potentially going to be switching in here, uh, making sure that Venusaur just gets its last bit of health, oh, sorry, a last bit of damage off. And certainly uh, being able to knock out the either the Togekiss or the Excadrill here would be a real benefit to... Uh, David's side of the field, but he might have to uh, maybe sacrifice a little bit too much with that Torkoal coming in to take a lot of damage uh, to do that. So here we go. Indeedy leaving the field. Torkoal. Yeah, whether coming into this game too, Torkoal going to join, boost up the speed of that Venusaur. And again, really like this because the Max Airstream's gone off on Arash's side of the field. So David also needs some speed boost using that Chlorophyll ability to go from the Max Zeus into the Togekiss. We know already that's going to be able to pick up the KO, but I think the best benefit here is that special attack boost. Venusaur now gets um, two of them. Torkoal has got one, so it joins the field in a good position, but it does have to still worry about that Exit Drill going for something like an Earthquake. That's something Torkoal, even though it has a really good defense, isn't going to be wanting to take, you know, that's not a defense boost at all um, that it got. Exegil does indeed go for that Earthquake, does take Torkoal down to below 50%, and Torkoal is not a speedy Pokemon by any means. So now that the Venusaur has been KO'd, if you're David, you need to be able to bring in a Pokemon that is going to be fast and apply some good offensive pressure to protect the Torkoal. Maybe something like the Urshifu could apply some good damage, but at the same time, if that's what David does, Rash has a free slot as well. He could bring in the Tyranitar and boost up the speed and change the weather. He certainly could, and uh, boosting up the speed of this Excadrill even further than its already uh, boosted speed stat from that Max Airstream uh, could be beneficial. But uh, one of the two conditions that we had on uh, we were talking about earlier is uh, when Urshifu's on the field, uh, the speed advantage needs to be in play. Well, uh, that's already been dealt with by the uh, Max Airstream. So Excadrill will now be faster than the Urshifu. Uh, of course, both of these Pokemon have to... Uh, both Incineroar and Exodrill have to worry about a close combat, but uh, close combat doesn't hit two Pokemon at once. And so, you know, there's some real uh, flexibility there for Arash to be able to just uh, pick which target he wants to uh, attack with, uh, potentially both. And after this Intimidate coming out from the Exodrill uh, may not even be enough to pick up the knockout on either uh, on the Incineroar, um, mm -hmm. which would leave uh, Arash in quite a good position if he managed to get two attacks off in this game. Um, but you've got to think the Tyranitar is likely in the back for Arash, and so that Urshifu is really uh, very valuable to David, and David's got to find a way to uh, attack with it effectively mm -hmm. without losing it. Well, the time are really clocking down there. Extra going to go for the Iron Head into the Urshifu. Doesn't quite deal 50%. Urshifu able to not be flinched and goes through for the Wicked Blow. Going to connect into that extra um, and remove it from play with obviously the critical hit from the Wicked Blow. And that really helps out the Torkoal going forward. You know, it doesn't have to worry about any more of these Earthquakes. And Cineroar going for that Flare Blitz as well. So really nice targeting here by Arash, doubling into that Urshifu. Torkoal protecting, kind of a wasted protect now when you look back on it. Could have been a good opportunity for David to um, deal out some decent damage. But, you know, hindsight is always um, a blessing in that sense. And it now looks like, you know, Arash in a great position. You can bring in that Tyranitar, change up the weather, apply some good damage. You know, expanding force isn't going to even affect either of the Pokemon um, that Arash has got as they're both dark types. So indeed, he kind of being mm. a little bit useless here, I suppose. Yes, it can go for some redirection, but it's not going to take much from both of these 
Pokemon on Arash decide to pick up the KO against it, and then Paul Tolkor is looking down a Tyranitar. It certainly is, and uh, that's not something that a Tolkor wants to be looking down at all. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, you really summed it up very well there, Lou. Uh, that indeed is just sort of out on a limb, and the only thing it can do is just clap along to Torkoal and hope Torkoal can do exactly what it wants to do. Uh, Tyranitar going for a protect, though, so not going to take any damage this turn, and Incineroar going for a flare protect, uh, probably into the NDD, just removing it from the field, making sure it's not going to be doing any shenanigans like helping hand any further, and Arash can just focus down on that Torkoal, uh, make sure he can win the game. Body press, though, unfortunately for David, does go into the Tyranitar protect, so great turn there by Arash. And it looks like it's just Torkoal versus the world. Yeah, I mean, a safe protect there from Arash. You know, the target really would have been the Tyranitar with that body press. You know that um, Tyranus is the one who applies the most pressure to Torkoal with um, its typing. Um, and then Torkoal, maybe if it's able to deal some good damage, pick up some KOs, maybe Incineroar could have been there. But it, it really was just Arash's game to lose there, I think, if he just clicked the wrong button. So phenomenal play by him here. Um, like you said, I think at the very beginning of the game, both these players learned a lot from game one and made those adjustments going into game two. You know, Arash played a little bit more offensively, made sure to Dynamax up that Togekiss so it could take um, the Max Ooze. But then on the flip side, David was able to use the Helping Hands so the Max Ooze dealt so much damage and Togekiss was still looking to be in a precarious position. But I think the really pivotal turn there for Arash was going for that double up into the Urshifu, removing it from play, meaning his Tyranitar and his Cineral mm. were both going to be safe so that he could have this perfect end game situation. And Tyranitar just going to wrap this up, going into the Torkoal, taking it down right into the red. I believe Torkoal already ate its berry anyway, so Incineroar can go for that Flare Blitz. And Ben, we have a game three. It's one more game. Well, it's championship point for both Italy and Sweden. I, honestly, as a spectator, I don't think you could ask for anything more right now. Yeah, and certainly some, not something you could even uh, hope to fast forward to. Uh, you know, you think this whole tournament, all of these matches, all of these games, all of these sets have come down to just one game. Uh, it's exactly what you want to see um, uh, as a viewer, the, how tight these uh, things are. Both of these both of these teams are equal in matches, and they are now 1-1 in the final set. So uh, fantastic play. And uh, speaking about fantastic play, we definitely got to talk about how well Arash adjusted um, into going into game uh, game number no, game number two. And uh, really, now the question is: Is uh, David going to be able to learn from? Uh, this match learn well enough that the Togekiss is really the threat um, and do something slightly different around it. Uh, maybe uh, bringing that Cinderace into play. Yeah, Cinderace with something like the Iron Head um, can apply a lot of damage to the the Togekiss and you could even Dynamax up that Cinderace, go for something like a Max Steel Spike, deal even more damage. But it, I think it's going to come down again if he brings that Venusaur or not, because if it's the Venusaur, you really want to be able to Gigantamax it for that residual damage. Uh, but at the same time, mm. Venusaur has that flexibility. You don't always have to, like, Dynamax it. You can go for something like Sleep Powder. You know, Psychic Terrain's not going to stop that going off. It's not um, Electric or Misty Terrain. Um, but, you know, I think our players are sticking to what they know. You know, things are close. This is not the time. Wait, you can you can argue it both ways. It's either the time to take risks <laughs> or really, really not the time. And I think both these players, they're so well-versed with their teams and they know what's at stake. So, Sweden bringing out Ndidi and Venusaur in Italy. X Drill and Togekiss. Yeah, and let's uh, let's talk about the same thing that we've been talking about every single game won so far uh, in this match. Uh, you know, you've got Follow Me versus Helping Hand on the Indeedy. You have G Max Vine Lash versus Max Ooze coming out from the Venusaur. You have the potential of Follow Me technically coming out from the um, Togekiss, and uh, whether or not that Togekiss does go for its Dynamax form again. Uh, but something that will be going for its Dynamax form again, or in fact, its Gigantamax form again, should I say, is that Venusaur going straight out on the offensive here. Um, and really interested to see if it's a Max who's coming out again. Indeed, he's going for that follow me. So not going to go for that helping hand. I think this is actually a good move here for David. x here going for the Earthquake. Of course, that's not going to affect anything to do um, with the follow me. But the follow me, I think, is critical here for the Togekiss. Won't be able to deal out any additional damage. The Max Ooze, once again, coming out from that Venusaur. Still not being able to pick up the KO. Needs a critical hit in order to achieve that without the helping hand. But once again, special attack boost. Really, really critical for that Venusaur. Um, does, of course, do some life orb recoil while Togekiss goes for the air slash. Manages to find its target this time. Targeting into that Ndidi. Not enough to pick up a KO, though, despite the critical hit. So Ndidi actually going to be able to hang on. I think this is amazing for David here. He's got another turn. 
um, where he can go for that helping hand and really boost up the damage Venusaur's capable of. Certainly is, and uh, you know, a really interesting move from Arash there, not going for his Dynamax uh, straight away. Um, that Togekiss was so pivotal in the last game, and uh, interesting that he hasn't decided to uh, defend it in the same way again, maybe thinking that a G-Max Vinelash was going to be coming out onto Excadrill, but uh, another Follow Me coming out, another Earthquake, so that is indeed he uh, knocked out this turn, and Venusaur just down to around half of its HP. Yeah, Venusaur has taken a little bit of a beating, but is going to give one back in retaliation. That G-Max Vinelash easily picking up the KO against the Togekiss, and I'm going to be honest, I really like this targeting because Tokik has been so pivotal to Arash's sort of win condition against a lot of David's Pokemon. You might have suspected that Arash would have maybe even switched out the Togekiss in this position, preserved it for later on, and even something like if it's Tyranitar, that's going to really hurt. But even like the Incineroar, you're going to deal some good damage with your special attack boost and obviously the health from mm. Didi as well. Um, Exodil, of course, still sitting pretty on the field, um, but is everyone's going to have to be taking some of that Ferocious Vine Lash beating now. They are, and, and that's going to add up. Uh, it won't be enough to knock out any of the Pokemon, but certainly will be enough to uh, help bring them all in range of an attack. Uh, Dragapult coming out here for the uh, for Arash and Urshifu coming out for uh, for David here, and I think definitely, um, yeah, David is definitely on the front foot here. Um, you know, he can obviously go for uh, a Dynamax on both of. Uh, Arash can go for a Dynamax on either of his Pokemon um, to oh. do some real damage. But looks like the Torkoal's just coming in and the Urshifu's switching straight back out. Yeah, I quite like this Urshifu being a little bit of bait here, you know, knowing that that is the Pokemon Arash cannot ignore. If it's on the field, it's going to pick up a KO if you let it. Um, so making it kind of the prime target and then switching it in the back, bringing out little Torkoal with excellent defense stats to be able to take something that maybe this... Um, Dragapult would fire out is an excellent play, but Dragapult is going to Dynamax up, so the offensive pressure will be gigantic coming out from Dragapult. And I do like this <laughs> adjustment again um, from Arash here. You know, he's keeping that extra drill on sort of the level playing field, not Dynamaxing it and actually instead going for this Dragapult. Max Quake going to come out from the Venusaur and pick up the KO against extra drill. Once again, just sitting there, able to pick up a nice clean KO, and it really does now bring um, Arash down to his last two Pokemon. So David trying to set things up, getting a special defense boost up as well. Um, probably not the most critical against, you know, we do see some special attack Dragapults, but predominantly they are the physical variant. And going for the max airstream into that tool call, I mean, what a bait with the Urshifu on the field. That would have done so much damage, taking it down to the Focus Ash if that is the item on it. I don't believe we've had it confirmed as of yet. But either way, tool call, a much better target to take that attack. Yeah, indeed. And I think we just saw a life orb coming out from the Dragapult. Mm. So. Uh, a little bit of an item reveal there and certainly going to be able to put the uh, Venusaur in range of any attack that uh, Dragapult wants to uh, dish out now. Uh, it is going to be going back into its normal form, so losing that boost that it gets from in its HP from its Gigantamax form. And uh, with that Dragapult going for its max airstream, uh, it's definitely the speediest Pokemon on the field, especially now that the Tyranitar coming in for Arash is brought back the sand onto the field um, and the question really is <laughs> that Urshifu's got quite a lot of work to do and, and not a lot of time to do it so to speak um, especially if it is holding that focus sash um, item uh, will be uh, sort of taken away by the sandstorm uh, come out from Arash's side of the field and uh, Arash just really happy to go on the offensive here uh, go for that Max Phantasm into Venusaur and crucially uh, drop that Torkoal's defense stat. Yeah, Torkoal looking to be in a precarious position here now. Um, minus one defense. Tyranitar going for that Rock Slide. Does actually manage to connect. You know, that could easily have been a risk there on Arash's side if Rock Slide, you know, not the most accurate of moves, might have been able to miss and Torkoal could fire off a body press into the Tyranitar, but does manage to find its mark. And now, oh, it's looking to be, like you said, a little bit difficult for that Urshifu. It will be in. You know, Toronto can't defend itself from a um, uh, a close combat coming out from the Urshifu. Uh, almost certain that the Dragapult will able to be able to take it to a Focus Sash if it is holding one. Um, if not, uh, likely that the Dragapult is going to be able to just cleanly knock out the Urshifu in one hit. So, uh, you know, there's half a chance. Uh, I mean, if the Urshifu goes for a close combat here, uh, the Dragapult doesn't leave the Urshifu in KO range from the Sandstorm. Uh, could be something like a Sucker Punch coming out, the Psychic Terrain 
uh, I think just left the field, so oh, no, I think uh, it's still oh, there. We'll be leaving the field next yeah. turn. Sorry, uh, if I again, if I've counted correctly, we don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's find. Well, I'm sure we'll find out at the end oh. of the turn. Uh, I mean, I, I was, was having the same thought as you, Ben. I was like, Sucker Punch could really end it all. It could be the upset. And then I saw that glimmer of pink or purple on the field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't showing there for a second. I was thinking, mm, I think it might be over next turn. But here we go. So uh, it is going to be a detect, though, coming out from the Urshifu. So uh, just waiting out this turn. And Max Airstream going to be able to do a little bit of chip damage. So if it was a Focus Sash... It isn't a focus sash anymore. Uh, that <laughs> Urshifu's taken a little bit of damage here. Um, and I think the last on the last turn of Dynamax, uh, most crucially, getting that uh, Tyranitar to be faster than the Urshifu. So Arash doing really well to remove any opportunity for Urshifu to attack. And uh, you can see that superpower going into the, te the, the detect there. Um, so no damage from the Urshifu, but uh, really important to know that that Tyranitar is likely faster than the Urshifu as is that Dragapult. Well, you were right, Ben. The Psychic Terrain has now left the field, and this is where things get really interesting. If you're a Rash, you cannot protect one of your Pokemon because there's no point, you know. Um, Urshifu can go through protects with its ability. If Urshifu does have Sucker Punch, this could, I believe, pick up the KO against that Dragapult. Tyranitar, as long as it's not able to pick up the KO against Urshifu, Urshifu can then come back with a fighting type move into that Tyranitar on the next turn. So I think it's going to really come down to the damage this Tyranitar can deal combined with the Sand chip as well as to whether potentially um sweden could take the upset here well i mean it really will depend on how that tyranitar is chained and uh, we saw Ooh. the sucker punch as you say going into that dragapult dragapult was going for an attack so is knocked out in this turn uh, we see that superpower coming out from the tyranitar uh, is it enough to pick up the ko oh, yes it, it is. is here we go arash is taking the win that is a win to italy in the european bgc cup uh, absolutely fantastic <laughs> congratulations to italy arash uh yeah what a what a match i can't really believe it to be honest that was really really intense coming down to the wire and italy are indeed your european champions and i mean everything was just sorry i literally have like no words right now because coming down <laughs> into that last turn you know david did play it really really well and he had a really good win position there but tyranitar being able to deal out so much damage um with the superpower mm. and of course Urshifu when you sort of strip things back the way we build the Urshifus tend to be a lot more sort of offensive so they're fast and they're offensive they don't really have to have a lot of defensive bulk and I think that's maybe obviously where Tyranitar is pretty safe to be able to deal out loads of damage and I mean I, I still just can't believe how close Sweden came to unhinging Italy in this situation and you know Italy going into this tournament were one of the favorites they were one of the titans and you know there's a lot of sort of nostalgia around Italian BGC and how they really are some amazing phenomenal Pokemon players and even though mm. they've you know been challenged along the way particularly in this final they have proven that <laughs> they are one of the best teams out there. And they certainly are and uh, you know they've got so many great players they've got such a depth of player base and of course you know they've got a, a really well established community where you know all of their players come together and work together on uh playing building uh learning about pokemon and just improving themselves as players as well so i'm not a surprise to see them up here not a surprise to see them taking the win uh you know if they would definitely be in one of those big top four teams that you think yeah okay that that would be a safe bet and mm. uh you see that coming to fruition here uh, absolutely as you said lou coming uh no no disrespect to Sweden at all. They have done so well in this tournament. Mm -hmm. um, such a great group of players, such a great group of people that have come together and really done what every team tournament you want to see happen. You know, a, a group of people playing as a team, not just as individuals. And that's exactly what we've been able to showcase across this whole journey through the last uh, however many weeks it's been. Um, to to finally be here with your champion Italy and your absolutely very worthy runner-up Sweden. Yeah, amazing play by Sweden there to come so far. And honestly, never underestimate anyone when it comes to Pokemon. Even if they are like the most well-versed player or team, or you know, even if you're playing just an online tournament, you never really mm. know what's going on um, in, in your opponent's mind. And it's one of those things, do not underestimate them because they can really surprise you. And I just want to say like a huge congratulations to Sweden for really defying the odds, particularly when Italy ate owed them in the pool stages. To be able to come <laughs> out and do that, like I, I think it's just really inspiring. And honestly, the little snoms, 
there of Sweden. They they like <laughs> they are the they are like just little champions in their own right. But they're, the, they're the real winners here. Yeah, the I mean winners. they're just they're adorable and they're amazing, and we got to feature them lots because Sweden did so well. But <laughs> this, of course, doesn't take away from the amazing accomplishment of Italy. So huge congratulations to them, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, it's been fantastic for all of you to join us along the way. Uh, thank you to Victory Road for organising the whole event. Uh, please show your appreciation for them. Uh, give them a like, give them a follow uh, on their channel. They put up so much great content and are doing so much work in the mm -hmm. in the community. And of course, keep a lookout for all of the tournaments that they run as well. Uh, they're always a fantastically run events and uh, yeah, just, just great to be a part of. Um, and of course, Thank you for all of the people that have been behind the scenes here. Uh, we have so many commentators that you've seen week on week that have been doing such great work. Um, you've got the people behind the scenes like uh, doing all of the tournament organization as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, just big thank you to all of those people for 